Airvax, developing mRNA delivered into the lungs. Fear of needles? No problem. Yale University researchers have developed an airborne method for delivering mRNA into your lungs. Are you opposed to corrupting your God-given DNA? That could be a problem. Airborne delivery for mRNA products could be used to spread to the masses all at once without them even knowing it. No knowledge or consent would be needed. This is their dream method, not only for their so-called therapeutics, but it could be easily used for bioweapons as well, and almost assuredly it will. They won't even have to bother with testing to see if one has the virus. They could, and will, do a blanket spread of airborne delivery right into the lungs of everyone. And there are many ways that they could deploy it without the public even being aware. At airports, from planes, at stadiums, at concerts, at food stores, anywhere man is, they could deploy without permission and without announcement. This is the dream for the wicked and nefarious purposes. Warfare goes to a whole new level. Understand, this is not just a spray like crop dusting. This is done with nanoparticles. You would need a high-powered microscope to see them. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. A human hair is 80,000 nanometers in diameter. Think about that. DNA restructuring and gen genetic altering can be done en masse. If you breathe, you're susceptible. This opens the door to a literal Pandora's box of nanotechnologies being infused into mankind and all the animals as well on a global worldwide scale. This is coming and it is coming fast. Unlike having the good frame of mind not to scan your palm or iris to pay for items at a store or even getting into a grocery store, this could be deployed within the air conditioning systems of any given store without your knowledge or consent. If you dare think that the U.S. government would not do this, just look at history. You'll find that they've done it as early as the 1950s. It's factual evidence to show that. Of course, some, far too many, would argue that this is just for the benefit of humanity, for the greater good, to protect us all. The same argument was given a few years ago, and it was a lie then, as well as being a lie now. Could this also be used to alter one's frame of mind? Unquestionably, it could alter the mind of people. It could also alter one's physical abilities and alter one's genetic makeup the DNA. But there's more. Another method for delivery of these treatments is through food. And we've heard it talked about with the uh, pork and the livestock, but they're actually doing it in shrimp now. The Israeli company is pioneering the way to deliver genetic altering treatments through the feeding of shrimp. It goes into the shrimp. Might it go into you? If they can put it in the shrimp food, could they put it in your food? The article states that while the company is currently focused on shrimp production, the delivery technology has numerous applications in aquaculture and beyond, which the company said it is very excited to explore. I'll have the links below in the description section. How long, O oh Lord? How long before you're coming? Back in the days of Noah, God was so fed up with the wickedness of mankind that he said that he regretted creating man. It grieved him. So God said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and fowls of the air. It grieved him that he even made them. So God was to destroy the whole world 
through a worldwide flood, but he found favor with Noah. God said that Noah was perfect in his generation. He wasn't a perfect man. No one is, save Jesus Christ. What he was saying is that Noah was perfect in his DNA. His, his genetic makeup had not been corrupted. God was to separate Noah and his three sons and all of their wives before the judgment of God would come upon the earth, his wrath, the flood. Today, we who are alive and in Christ are looking for a similar separation from this world before the wrath of God comes onto an unbelieving and Christ-rejecting world, a world filled with wickedness and corruption. And to be very clear, I am not saying or even suggesting that any and all who have taken a gene-altering injection will be left behind at the rapture. That said, I see the story of Noah as a picture of the rapture in many ways. Wickedness was rampant then, and it is now. The gene pool had been corrupted then, and it is now. And God separated Noah before he poured out his wrath onto the world. God will separate those who believe on Jesus in their heart and confess him with their mouth before the wrath to come. That wrath is commonly known as the tribulation, a period of seven years which will be the most horrific time on the face of the earth in all of human history, before or after. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, the 70th week of Daniel, the day of the Lord. Our blessed hope is the great harpazo, the rapture, the catching up of the believers by Jesus Christ in the clouds where we will be with him and be like him forevermore. If you're in that camp and looking for his coming, praise God and thank you, Jesus. If you're not, you need to do one of two things. Call on the name of Jesus now or prepare for the most horrific time on earth in all of world history. So call on the name of Jesus. Confess you're a sinner, as we all are. Believe that Jesus lived in the flesh, fully God and fully man. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is by his blood sacrifice for us that we may be saved. With this, you can be saved and spared before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Now, the other option is to prepare to be in a dystopian world where the wrath of God will pour onto the whole earth. What we see happening right now in the world will be considered the good old days compared to what is to come. First, I want you to understand the wrath of God will come in varied forms. Some he will allow the wickedness of mankind to come upon the people of the earth. And some he will have his servants, both prophets and angels, to pour his wrath onto the earth and its inhabitants. In that seven year period, soon to come, fully half of the world's population will die through war, hunger, death, and the beasts of the earth. Note, beasts can be on a nanometer scale, far smaller than we can see. Also, through the four angels loosed upon the earth that we see in Revelation 8. So I pray that you are ready and waiting and looking up for that great day when Jesus calls us up hither. I'm Breck Rothage from End Times Explained. Even so, come Lord Jesus.